When Li Shang loaned me a Li One at the end of last month, they told me to keep it for a week or two and to use it like it was my own vehicle. They didn't put any kind of limits on what I could do with the car or what I could say about it. Since returning the Li One plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, I've been thinking about and struggling with how to structure a review of this car. When I had the car, I was focused on filming shots of the exterior and interior and menus and different features. But now that I'm in my editing room closet, I feel like what I captured and what I said while filming doesn't necessarily do justice to the experience of owning a Li Shang One. I think that a review of this car deserves a different approach from me because it is a different kind of car. I have been thinking for a long time about how to structure this video and what exactly I should say, and I hope that by the end of it, you understand my complicated feelings about this car. I recently watched a video from Marquez Brownlee in which he talked about how difficult it can be for EV startups to get from concept to production. If you follow the EV space at all, then I'm sure you are well aware of how many cars have been introduced with a big splash at a convention somewhere and then never made it much farther than that. If you haven't seen Marquez's video yet, I suggest that you do that and there's a link in the description. So with that being said, I find it incredibly impressive for a company to create a brand new car out of whole cloth and then get it into mass production and into consumers' hands. It is an insanely complex task. I find that what Li Shang has done with the one is especially impressive. I don't know what kind of market research that they did, but they seem to have decided that their new startup car brand will only have one model and it will be a large extended range family vehicle in a country with not just small average family sizes, but shrinking family sizes and with a distinct lack of a road trip culture and in a country where most workers have very short commutes, especially by American standards. Many electric car makers in China probably looked at the, that exact same data and that's why they chose to go in a completely different direction making micro cars for short daily commutes. But it seems like Li Shang made a daring bet that a bigger, bolder, and more audacious car would be their key to carving out a unique position in this highly competitive new energy vehicle market. And it seems to be paying off. Li has sold well over 100,000 vehicles in the past two years in China. So like I said, they're jumping to the market with their first and only product, the Li One, being a brand new car created from scratch. It was a bold move. I'm sure it took an incredible amount of effort know-how, time, and money to create a car as good as the one on their first try. It is a huge undertaking and most new car companies do not make it this far. In my opinion, they mostly did a really fantastic job, but perhaps they bit off a little bit more than they could chew and try to do a little bit too much. And as a result, there are a few areas where I feel like they fell just short of a home run. Let's start with the good. Not only is the Lee One big, but the interior is incredibly spacious, which makes it feel even bigger. Even in the back row seats, a full-sized human will have enough space for relatively short trips. Of course, I wouldn't want to sit in the last row for a few hundred miles at a time, but there is more than enough room for six average size adults to sit comfortably in the Li One. Not only is the space uh, spacious, it feels even bigger thanks to the massive windows and the fantastic sunroof that actually opens unlike so many other electric cars. I cannot praise the interior enough when it comes to comfort and spaciousness. The materials throughout are also extremely high quality and for the most part they feel great to the touch, even in areas that you would not necessarily expect. If you have already seen my first person point of view video that I'm linking below, you may remember that I mentioned that the car feels heavy and that it has a presence on the road which you can really sense when you are driving. It's actually quite difficult for me to describe the feeling of driving this car. And it's not a bad feeling. Some cars can be stiff and you can feel every single pebble or crack. And when you get out of the car, your back is aching. While other cars have suspensions that are so loose and floaty and you get tossed about side to side on any bump in the road, the Li One just feels sturdy. It's comfortable and sturdy. It is smooth to drive and just to ride along in. It is also whisper quiet, even in fuel mode, and you can very easily toggle between an assortment of modes in order to customize the type of drive that you want to experience. You can also quickly toggle between electric only, hybrid, or fuel only modes. Interestingly, when you choose fuel mode, the car warns you that the ride might be louder or have increased vibration due to the gas motor, but I legitimately could not feel or hear any difference. Because of the comfortable, smooth, and quiet ride, as well as the spacious interior, this car would almost assuredly be ideal for a road trip with young kids. The one has a lot of really thoughtful touches that are great for a family on a road trip, such as the adapter to plug in your appliances outside of your car while you are set up in camp. It also has tons of apps, including Billy Billy, WeChat, iChee, and more, assuring that there is something for everyone. Even better is that because the passenger has their own screen, they can use apps, including video apps, while the car is in motion. Unlike most competitor cars, the car also starts up lightning quick, is ready to go even before you've had time to put in your seatbelt. Um, today I have yet to enter the car and one thing that's very impressive to me is how quickly the uh, car turns on and is ready to go. This thing just boots up so quickly. I would say it's very comparable to a Tesla which is just on and ready to go as soon as you're in the car. 
well, it's kind of bright right now, so you can't really see the screen, but there you go. It's already on, already ready to go. I can navigate. It's loading the map app right now, and I can search for where I want to go. So that's crazy quick, lightning speed, everything's ready to go. I would say that aside from this massive dookie on my windscreen, that's the most impressive thing about the Lixiang so far. Another feature that I really liked is the tire camera. These cameras are stationed above your tires and they are extremely helpful if you are parking on a narrow street and you need to park close to the curb, but you don't want to scrape up your nice rims. I've seen so many complaints from Tesla owners online about them scratching their rims, and I've done the same myself with my Neo. All cars should come equipped with tire cameras. You probably won't need them all that often, but they sure come in handy when you do. One of the major complaints that you always hear about electric vehicles is the limited range. Since this is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle that has both a large battery and a gas generator, the range of the Li-1 is going to be much better than most electric vehicles. The estimated NEDC range is over 1,000 kilometers from a single charge and a full tank of gas. I unfortunately wasn't able to do a range test for you, but in the real world, while traveling on the highway, you could probably expect somewhere around 7 or 800 kilometers of range, or close to 500 miles. This kind of range is probably why I see so many Li ones when I'm way out in remote parts of Western China. The flexibility of being able to both add fuel or charge the car and travel vast distances is probably a huge positive for a lot of consumers. You can drive only using electric mode while in your daily city life and then utilize the extended range that the gas generator provides when you want to take your family on a road trip vacation. There really is a lot to like about this car. And when you compare the price point with other cars in its class, the Li-1 really looks like a fantastic bargain for what you get. It is no surprise to me that the Li-1 has been so successful. Again, Li Shang asked me to use the car exactly like I would use it. Treat it like it was my own, and above all else, to be honest. They didn't give me any requirements on what I could or could not say, and I really appreciate them for that. I think that it shows a lot of confidence in their product. And a quick aside, if you'll indulge me for a minute, a while back, a different Chinese car company saw my YouTube channel and they asked me if I'd like to test drive their car and to make a video. I agreed and I went on a test drive. To be honest, I was not terribly impressed. The software was poor, the car was not fun to drive, and it wasn't really aesthetically pleasing to me. The car, to be fair, was at a much lower price point, so I wasn't expecting a premium experience, but I still thought that the car missed the mark in a lot of ways. I wasn't going to say anything terrible about the car. It was fine for what it was, and I was just going to tell the truth, but that company would not let me give a true and honest opinion, so I never posted the video. Again, Li Shang has given me free reign to say exactly what I want. And that's where this review starts to get a bit more difficult for me. And where I go back to the Marquez Brownlee video that I referenced earlier. Because there are so many directions that a new car startup can go. And most of those directions are nowhere fast. So to get even one car built and mass produced and on the road is an incredible feat. When these companies are starting from scratch, they can either be conservative or they can try some really novel ideas. And to get some of those new ideas from concept to reality must present a massive challenge. When it comes to novel ideas, the three main screens, along with the subscreen in the cockpit, is pretty unique, especially at the time that the Li-1 launched. These days, quite a few competitors are offering similar cockpits, and I'd imagine that cars will only continue to offer more and more screens in the future. I do not envy the software and the user interface developers that had to figure out how to make it all work together in a simple and elegant way. But if I'm being honest, a lot of it is not very intuitive. The default layout of all four screens contains a lot of information. There is something to be said for the minimalist design of something like a Tesla. In a Tesla, all of the information is in one place, the design language for the most part makes sense, and using it very quickly becomes second nature. Even after a week with the Li-1, I was still struggling at times to find what I needed to do and to do things quickly and easily. The Li-1 does allow quite a bit of customization in order to make the user interface work for you. I know that some people do appreciate a lot of customization options in their software. That's why some people really love Android phones, for example. On the other hand, you sometimes have an almost magical feeling when you get something that just works right out of the box, so to speak. Soon, Li Shang will launch its second model, the L9. And while I have not seen the user interface in action just yet, just by looking at the pictures, I can already see that the L9 operating system will almost assuredly be more intuitive and easier to use than the Li-1. So while we're on the subject of the L9, let's briefly take a look at the cockpit compared with the one. First, they have eliminated the driver display in favor of a heads-up display, which I'm all about. I love having a HUD, and I think that it's a must-have feature. It not only allows you to keep your eyes on the road while you drive, 
but it also eliminates the need for audio turn-by-turn -turn directions. I hate audio turn-by-turn -turn directions. It interrupts your music, interrupts your podcast, interrupts your book. Turn-by-turn -turn directions are just annoying, and having a heads-up display is an improvement in every way. They also appear to have eliminated the subscreen from the Li 1, which by default mainly has climate control buttons, but it can also be customized. In the L9, the primary display is now bigger, but also has a dock which should allow quick access to settings, audio, navigation, driving modes, and more. This cockpit, just at a glance, looks far more intuitive and a lot more functional. And of course, the larger screen isn't just for the driver, but the passenger also gets an increased display size for his or her apps. If that's not enough, the back of the L9 also has a display, as well as an HDMI port for that display, so you can now hook up your console and your kids can get in some Mario Kart while you drive, or when you are parked, you can all climb into the back and the whole family can battle it out. In my opinion, the L9 looks like they iterated on the Li 1 and improved the functionality of it in every possible way. As I mentioned earlier, the Li 1 is a family car and Li Shang is carving out the niche of being a family brand. Because of that, I don't think that the car should be overly complex. It should be simple, intuitive, and built for fun and functional for the whole family. I think that they tried to do that with the one, and they did a remarkable job for their first car. But I think that the L9 appears to be a big step up in reaching their goal of being a true car built first and foremost with family in mind. It might sound like I'm beating a dead horse right now, but once again, Li Shang asked me to use the car as if it were mine. And I really took that to heart. And that is what makes the review quite hard for me because this car really isn't built for me. It doesn't suit my needs. I think that it is fair to say that not every car is built for every person. I wanted to go on a long road trip, but I didn't necessarily want to burn a lot of fuel. The electric motor will only get you about 100 kilometers of range on the highway. In my use case, as somebody that likes to go on road trips, I don't want to charge the car every 100 kilometers. And I also don't want to put gasoline in the car. I'm well aware that China burns a lot of coal for their energy. And fundamentally, there's probably not much, if any, difference in using gas or going to a DC fast charger on the side of the highway and using electricity to charge my car. But I personally don't love the idea of putting gas in. One of my favorite things about having an electric vehicle is not going to gas stations. I've said it in plenty of other videos, and so I would be lying to you now if I said that to me, one positive aspect of the Li 1 is the ability to put gas in the car. For my needs, I believe a fully electric Li would be more suitable. Now this doesn't make the Li 1 or the L9 bad cars, they just aren't for me. Another way that I would use the car as if it were my own on a road trip is that I would sleep in the car. In the Li 1, only the back row of seats fold flat, meaning that there's not enough room for me to put a mattress and lay down flat in the back. Again, for my personal use case, the Li 1 is not for me. It's a family vehicle. It's meant to be a family vehicle. So it makes sense that me, or maybe me and my partner, or maybe me and my partner and a dog, is still too much vehicle for us three. I think that most families would choose a Li 1 because they would value the spaciousness and the comfort for their whole entire family, more than they would value the ability to lay down in the back and sleep in the car. If a family with a Li 1 wants to camp on their road trip, I'm sure that they value the ability to pack in a lot of belongings while still sitting comfortably as they travel down the road. They can of course pack their tent and their chairs and their barbecue and their luggage, and they can set up camp and they can sleep outside under the stars while they have their appliance plugged into the charge point on the outside of the car. Different people have different use cases. At the end of the day, the way I feel about the Li Shang One is this. It's a fantastic vehicle, especially as a first entry for a company entering a very complex and difficult industry. There is a lot to like about the car, and it should be extremely attractive to families that want an affordable, new energy vehicle that has incredible range, impressive technology, and is as comfortable to ride in as it is to drive. It isn't going to be for everyone, and I'm positive that Li Shang is well aware of that. However, if you are looking for a family vehicle, you should seriously consider a Li 1 or the L9 when either of these cars are available in your market. Despite the Li 1 not being for me, I'm sure it suits the needs of a whole lot of people. And I personally am very much looking forward to trying out the L9 as soon as it's available and seeing what kind of improvements they've made from the Li Shang 1 to the L9. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think about my review and like and subscribe if you haven't done that. And Give me as much money as you want if you want to donate. Good night.